Hello guys and welcome to another David Zamaletta. My name is Serge and in today's video this is going to be a test drive right after I have pressurized the system um, in my Range Rover and added some more water hopefully worked out any of the air pockets so it's still running on nothing but distilled water without no thermostat with the old radiator with the old overflow tank so i'm actually testing things to get some kind of uh baseline as to how this vehicle actually performs as far as the uh, vehicle temperature goes um before i actually do everything that i'm getting ready to do uh also this could tell you um some of the things that you may be interested in if you're running nothing but water, you could actually compare notes and see uh, the results that I'm getting to see if you're actually getting similar results. Now, this video is going to be a little bit different uh, than other videos that you will find because, as you could see, I have this external um, electronic temperature gauge. It's actually a tuner. You could do a lot with it, but I'm actually using it to see the exact vehicle temperature which is really important because i could actually see any minor fluctuations um that's happening uh with the temperature any type type of uh drops in temperature or it rising so keep in mind the normal range rover operating temperature is between 195 fahrenheit and 220 anything above or below it is when you could actually see some kind of problems so this is why i'm going to be showing you exactly what's going on and the fact that i'm running it without no thermostat you could see that it's still running at a normal operating temperature okay so check out uh, the video before this one i will show you everything that i have done to get up until this point but keep in mind I bought this Range Rover with overheating issue. You may or may not have seen the videos, but in short, uh, the Range Rover was overheating because the radiator was leaking. Uh, the overflow tank reservoir was leaking. Uh, what I have done is I have uh, bought it and I put a stop leak in it for like 10 bucks and it resolved the issue i was able to drive the vehicle for twenty thousand miles without no issues at this point it has been twenty one thousand miles i know at least in my possession this vehicle has not been overheated because i have an external uh, temperature gauge and i monitor things very closely and i make sure that i don't overheat this vehicle okay so but with that being said i have performed lots of tests and I'm doing it to learn myself and also to share my findings with you guys. Um, but anyways, enjoy the test drive. And if you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And in an upcoming video, um, I will actually be showing you uh, the replacement of the radiator, the reservoir. And of course, we're going to be doing a lot of other things. But we're going to be trying to do things step by step to try to properly diagnose the issue and then solve the issue. So here's what to expect from this video. You will see the test drive right after I completed. Uh, basically completed what? Uh, radio was leaking and I basically fixed it. Uh, and I will also have a video afterwards. Uh, it's going to be some night driving and also going to be some night idling. I'm going to be trying some new things uh, to see what kind of results that I will have. I think it's going to be interesting to see. Um, but anyways, guys, thank you so much and enjoy the video. So anyways, I've just been driving for only a minute. I just want to record this, that the temperature has gotten around 187. So that is almost the proper operating temperature of 195. Um, and that's what the temperature gauge looks like. So we're at now 189. Um, so reason I'm showing you this, I'm just basically letting you know how quickly the engine actually warms up, even without the thermostat. And I believe a lot of it has to do with the fact that there's water in the system 
and water heats up a lot quicker than, um, uh, let's say like radiator fluid. So I'm going to monitor the temperatures. I know what, what to look for. And if I see anything out of the ordinary, I will be letting you know exactly what that's like. So guys, I've been driving for at least five minutes now, um, maybe even more. If anybody's looking at the mileage, you could rewind back and see exactly how many miles I drove. But anyways, the temperature is at 196. And what I'm trying to do is uh, give it a mix of driving conditions where I'm driving on the highway and I'm driving uh, just on local streets. So I'm just gonna be going through a neighborhood right now and just to see where this is gonna creep up. So you may think that driving on the highway will actually keep the temperature uh, cooler. But actually, when you're dri driving on normal streets, the temperature will rise a little bit faster due to the fact there's just a little bit less, less uh, wind getting into the radiator to cool things down. And uh, it's actually going to creep up a little bit. But right now, we're still not driving that slow. Uh, where really you could tell, tell the difference is uh, when you actually pull over, you're parked, and it starts heating up. And then uh, I would like to observe to see if there's going to be any additional uh, leakage happening so at this point uh, as you can see it's fluctuating between 196 and 198 uh, degrees which is actually really great um, prior to me doing what I just did uh, it would actually already be at about 205 uh, to 217 especially when I start driving uh, uh, you know like slower and stuff so it remains to be seen whether or not uh, this has actually helped. And uh, if I start driving slower uh, and pull over, we will see if the temperature is actually going to rise. And I would like to find out how much it will rise. So I'll get back to you when I see any more changes. So currently it's fluctuating between uh, 208 and 210. And uh, we're dri driving at like regular like neighborhood speeds. Uh, so this is what I would kind of see that before, but it could be as much as like 217. Uh, so it remains to be seen if there's going to be any more changes. Okay, now I'm seeing 217. This is normally what I would see it. And, um, you know, obviously I am parked. Uh, that's what the temperature gauge shows. And now it's creeping out to 219, 220, 21. Not impressed with this, uh, but, you know, what can I expect, right? This is not a proper fix, so it's a good idea to just uh, monitor so the situation. I barely had a chance to leave the neighborhood as, and as I'm driving, the temperature actually dropped a little bit, um, but you would never know according to this temperature gauge. Like it just looks absolutely normal. And this is what you would see in normal driving conditions. And that's why I'm showing you the normal temperature gauge, but you could clearly see some of the changes that's happening according to some of the driving. Now. I think it's uh, it's quite normal to fluctuate like this. I mean, I will be able to uh, see it a lot more clearly uh, whenever I actually change the radiator and I will change uh, the thermostat, I will change um, the overflow tank, and we're gonna be using some actual radio fluid instead of using this um, distilled water. And then I will test it again and I will see exactly like what's happening because fluctuations of temperatures is normal. It allows water to circulate as things warm up. That's why the thermostat will open up and let water in. So I think uh, right now it's, uh, it's nothing scary. Um, what I will do, however, is in just a little bit, I'm going to pull over and just um, be parked and I wanna see how far the temperature gauge will climb. Now, note that in the past, it would climb as much as 135, and this is after being parked for five minutes. So I wanna see if that's going to be the case or if it's going to be slightly improved. I also wanna observe uh, my water level inside of my uh, overflow tank, and additionally, to see if there's gonna be any spillage uh, or if any spillage has occurred since I've been driving. So I've been driving for a while and uh, the temperature fluctuates from 210, 214, which is quite normal. We're staying uh, below the 220 uh, recommended maximum. And that's what the temperature gauge looks like. You could track the miles that I've driven uh, if you're observing that, but this is okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go home and I'm gonna observe uh, how long it's going to take for it to heat up, if any. Uh, prior to my recent observation, while I was under pressure, everything was actually pretty good. So I'm hoping that the number is going to be just as good uh, as it was before, prior to the test drive.
about a couple minutes has passed and it's just normal uh, 20 miles per hour type of driving 208 210 so it's actually pretty good range i'd say i've been driving for a while uh i've seen ranges go as much as uh like 210 208 and as low as 199 so it's actually doing pretty good right now i'm actually getting ready to go through a car wash and uh let's see what the temperature is going to be like in a car wash because the car is going to be barely moving so i just pulled over to the car wash and this is what we're seeing it's uh 212 currently so let's see if the temperature becomes a lot higher in a car wash and then after the car wash so beginning of the car actually just entering the car wash uh, it rose to 214 prior and now it's 216 let's see if it goes uh, any higher Two seventeen. And of course that's what the center uh, gauge looks like uh, for the temperature. You could clearly see it's slightly below center, which is what you would be normally seeing. Fluctuating between 217 and 219 as I'm up, about to exit. This is still fine, but if it's gonna go to 230, I'm not gonna be uh, really happy about that. So going through a car wash sort of simulates like you would be going through a drive-thru. And I mean, it's still doing pretty well, like it's not overheating or anything, but I will go home and just park it and then just wait till uh, temperatures drop. So I'm almost home, I've been driving for a while and this is the temperature that I'm getting, 212, 210, as you can see, that's where it's fluctuating. This is how fast I'm going. And as you can see, the mileage, if anybody's keeping track, you can see how many miles I put and the temperature is quite normal. So once I get home, I plan to let it idle and I'm gonna monitor the situation here. And I'm also going to monitor uh, the water level um, while it's parked and see, see where it's gonna go. Hello guys and welcome to another David Zamaletta. In today's video I actually am monitoring my Range Rover temperature and there's nothing wrong right now but I wanted to kind of document uh, what I'm seeing and it's a little bit important because if you're running into trouble if it will be overheating perhaps uh, this information could actually help you out. Um, now as you notice the, the temperature outside at 60 degrees driving about uh, 50 miles an hour and look at the temperature it's 190 degrees it is actually really great and i'm actually going a little bit uh slightly uphill and it's 190 degrees fahrenheit but watch what happens if i turn ac on just one notch and now we're actually going uh, downhill the temperature actually, what I've noticed is uh, it's actually going to start going up. Well, it, I mean, we're rolling down, but you know, now we're gonna have a, like a slight, slight hill. Uh, so I actually haven't even seen it, like one foot, 187. So I've been noticing that the temperature actually will begin to climb with AC being on. So perhaps it's, uh, the you know, the engine struggles a bit more uh, when AC is on, even though it almost uh, seems like irrelevant because that's a totally different system. But it also makes a little bit sense because uh, when AC compressor, you know, for it to run, it's no longer free flowing. So it puts uh, slightly more tension on the belt, causing the engine to work a little bit harder and uh, the temperature will start increasing. So I'm still just, you know, going at a constant speed here. So like, I mean, at this time, temperature did not increase, but 
I did actually have it increased uh, all the way to uh, 200 and like two um, temperature. This is why I decided to make this video because I was testing it prior, uh, prior to making the video. So it's 190 right now. It's a very minor incline with AC being on, but I mean, I only have it on on speed one, which is just a blower motor. So technically that, that should not matter. I just now put speed uh, three and all of a sudden I'm seeing, you know, some differences. As you can see, clearly it's 194 and we're actually going downhill right now. Uh, on the camera, it may seem like we're going uphill. I mean, we're now beginning to go uphill right now, but we weren't going down downhill. So AC is on right now, it's just on uh, on three, a speed three, which is just a blower motor, which should not really make any difference if it's like speed one or speed three or, you know, speed seven, you know. Um, what does matter is AC is on and now it's, you know, the engine has to work a little bit harder. This is why a lot of times, you know, if somebody wants to accelerate a little bit faster, they turn AC off uh, there was a common uh, knowledge back in the day where they said like it just takes a couple horsepower away which I don't really know how much horsepower you lose but it just seems that when you have AC on your car is going to be slightly weaker but you could clearly see it's uh, 196 and I'm just going to drive just a little bit more and we're going to see if the temperature is going to you know climb I'm just basically driving at constant speed of uh, 55 and now we got like a steady downhill so perhaps it's going to be easier for the car to drive and uh, it, it may uh, the temperature may fall some you know as you, you're starting to realize so it's like 194 because I really don't even have my uh, foot on the throttle the sudden there's like so many cars like normally there's like nobody here at this uh, late at night but there's just like way too many cars for some reason well it's 194 even though we're just going downhill it's just like 194 uh, and I don't want to turn uh, the AC off uh, because obviously the temperature is going to be dropping anyways and um, it's going to be a little bit hard hard to tell just a lot of downhill so i was hoping to get some uphill action uh or just just going straight you know all together because right now we're just going downhill 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 um i did not even realize how much uh, hills there are here um i drive here all the time but when you're actually trying to monitor something you do notice them because i wasn't really noticing them before but uh but let's see if I turn the AC off right now. Let's see how low can the temperature go, um, if any. And we're actually going uphill right now. Slightly uphill, so the temperature went up just a little bit. But now AC is off. It should be easier for the car to operate. Now we're slightly going downhill, like not by much. And uh, I'm, I'm barely on the throttle. I really don't need to be. Actually, we're going slightly uphill. My car just downshifted. And it's like 194. So I know right now the test uh, seems uh, not that great. I mean, just because of just all of this up and down, up and down, and you could easily think, well, going downhill, obviously the temperature's going to uh, go down. And going uphill, it's going to rise a little bit, even though they're very, very little hills. And right now, with AC being off, it's only showing like 194. So let's see. But either way, guys, I've tested it off camera and uh, it was fairly just a straight road. And I've noticed that with my AC off, it's just, I just turned AC off and all of a sudden I realized that I'm no longer above 200 because I was like, 202 205 you know that was the temperature but once i turned ac off i realized i'm like i went uh down to 190 so what i'll end up doing is i'm going to test it further uh when i'm actually idling and record a separate video 
versus idling with AC off because it's gonna be like a little bit better test and then idling with AC on and um, I'll do the AC off uh, to begin with and see if the temperature is gonna be less and then we're gonna turn AC on see where the temperature goes and try to turn AC down and see if the temperature is gonna go down then the test is gonna be a little bit more accurate because right now it's just a lot of ups, ups and downs but if you guys have experienced uh, such a thing and um, uh, to where if you turn AC off it's easier for the car to work and if you turn AC on it's a lot harder uh, for it to work let me know um, I do understand uh, this this is a common type of thing if you do have an overheating car you should um, turn heat on high and you know put just basically just uh, spin your um, your climate control adjuster into the red and basically just uh, run your blow, blower motor on high that way the heater core can open up and the uh, water can properly circulate and uh, cool down the engine so that will definitely help but right now um, it, it is set on high you know um, but uh, the thing about it is uh, there is no uh, thermostat so water circulating freely anyways so uh, that is that so that's going to be uh, inaccurate. I mean, now we got some regular type of driving here. Uh, temperatures like 194, which is about what we're getting uh, with AC being on. But right now it's staying around like 194 with AC being off. So this is just normal type of driving. And now it's 192. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Um, take care of yourself and see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye. Hey, guys. In today's video, I'm going to be trying to uh, do like a little test. Um, and the test is going to do with um, what's better for the car, um, car's temperature if you're having some overheating issues. Uh, would it be have an AC on or off type of situation? I mean, we all know that if you put your heat on high, and blow your uh, blower motor uh, on full speed so letting that warm air come inside is going to actually cool down the engine um, and obviously if you have like AC on it should actually be harder for the engine to operate uh, therefore raising the temperature a little bit more also uh, when you're driving a car uh, the car is actually going to be overheating less, even though it seems like idling would be less, but actually when you're driving the car, it's actually going to be overheating less if it's a constant speed. So at the start of a video, when you seen it was a two or three uh, temperature, I just arrived home and immediately started recording. So at this moment, AC is off. So I want to uh, look at the highest temperature that it's going to go to uh, with AC being off. And then what we're going to do is we're going to um, turn AC on and see if it will go higher. And then when it will, we will see how far will it go. And then I will turn AC off uh, to see if it's actually going to go um, down some. And also I will try to run um, air on high, uh, but like without AC and see if that's going to help uh, temperatures to be dropped. So I think it's uh, going to be the best if I'm just basically idling because uh, the test is going to be pretty much true. I tried doing this while driving uh, and there were some inconsistencies and I figured um, this test would be a little bit better. Now, I'm not having any issues uh, with this car overheating right now. However, if you've been uh, keeping up uh, with, with the content on this channel, uh, then you will realize that I bought this Range Rover with overheating issue and currently um, as of making this video I am running um, uh, this vehicle with only uh, distilled water that's the only thing inside of radiator fluid um, I did not replace the radiator which was leaking uh, when I actually bought it. it was actually leaking a lot if you watched the other videos you could see how bad it was leaking but I end up fixing it with um, uh, with basically radiator stop leak and also the overflow tank has like uh, some kind of cracks in it 
Uh, I do have a new overflow tank just came in, um, but uh, I, I haven't replaced it just yet. So we have an old radiator, old overflow tank, and guess what, no thermostat. So uh, when I first bought it, I removed the thermostat. And when I did, um, I sort of fixed this issue and uh, the problem went away for a while and I was able to drive it uh, for, I don't know, like maybe 11,000 miles. And then I thought, okay, well, let me install the, the thermostat. And then I installed the thermostat, but I did not use any special methods of um, having to, uh, well, using a special tool uh, that would help put vacuum on a system. And therefore, uh, when you would refill it with radiator fluid, uh, or water, like in my case, it would have like no air pockets. So I thought I done everything and I burped the system, you know, when I replaced the thermostat. And uh, since I wasn't having any issues, I tried my hardest uh, to replace it and not let air, any air in, okay? And uh, it was okay. And then I drove like about a hundred miles and I started having issues. So then I just pulled the thermostat off and I figured, look, up until I get uh, time to actually install a brand new radiator, only then I will actually install uh, the thermostat and uh, put all the radiator fluid in and stuff. Because at that point, I wasn't sure, um, you know, like what it needed. And also I didn't have all the parts and plus I'm running these little tests. Um, and obviously I wanted to use the vehicle and not um, have the, like any, um, I guess, time lost uh, from basically like my work. And uh, one of the things that I do uh, with this vehicle is actually I use it for lift. I just drive lift. So what I've done is I already put uh, 20,000 miles on it, right? And then it started having some issues and I recorded uh, some videos about it, um, and uh, you probably seen those. But then I fixed the problem again, and uh, drove another thousand miles, and then the problem sort of started coming back, just a little bit, like not overheating, but enough to have a concern and for me to want to to fix it the right way. So, anyways, um, it was showing 214, and it dropped down to 212 because the fans kicked on so i think it's time for us to turn ac on and i'm just going to turn it on just uh fan speed 2 which would not really impact anything but the fact that ac is on it should start rising now if it does reach uh 214 um i'm basically going to discount that fact but any number uh after uh 214 uh, fahrenheit would be considered that it's actually um, heating, the engine's actually heating up faster with AC being on. Now, keep in mind at this point, um, I'm obviously not driving, I'm basically at my house in a parking lot, and the fans did kick on. So, will it still, you know, heat up faster with the fans on, even, you know, like if we're running AC, or will it not? And also, Keep in mind it's 60 Fahrenheit outside, so things are fairly cool. Now, you might be wondering why didn't I also replace the radiator right away and just did everything correctly uh, right away? And the answer is uh, it was summertime and it was already hot as it is. And I've noticed um, with my temperature gauge uh, when I was mo monitoring everything with this external gauge that I was uh, within range of me operating this vehicle. like. It's supposed to be 195 uh, Fahrenheit uh, to 220 Fahrenheit. That's a normal operating range and I was within range. So I kind of decided that it's actually not bad for me to have a uh, thermostat off. And instead, things will be a little bit more cooler um, at a constant uh, versus, you know, cooling down, heating up. Uh, especially like in the summertime and especially when you get stuck in traffic and things so i made that decision 
but now I'm at a point where I have all the parts. Um, I also have a belt that's coming and I'm getting ready to replace um, the overflow tank uh, tomorrow. And I will remove all of that water tomorrow from uh, the radiator. And um, I will also replace the thermostat, uh, but not replacing the radiator. Uh, because I need to use this car on a Monday and the belt hasn't come in yet and before I start taking stuff apart I want to make sure I have all the parts I don't want to have to do the job twice so I would like to make sure that if I'm going to be taking my fan off and then taking the radiator off and disconnecting some stuff that I have all of the, all of the things that I need to complete the job well at this point um, it's not really impacting anything with AC being on. It's uh, it's not going any higher as far as the temperature goes. So I'm trying to blow AC on cold uh, and it's really not doing anything. So let's turn AC off. And now we're going to, well, well I have to do economy mode actually, and actually blow, blow heat on high. But since um, there's no thermostat, obviously the air that's coming out, it's it's not cold. Uh, I mean, it's not hot. It's gonna be coming out cool um, because water is always circulating. So what I wanna find out in this test that if running it on hot uh, and on high, um, will the temperatures drop? And at this point, uh, it's not really dropping, but at the same time, uh, it's 212 Fahrenheit. That's actually pretty good. It's actually really good. And I've seen it higher today. I'm just like wondering, interesting. I mean, maybe the temperature being so cold outside for some reason, it's helping the car cool because earlier today, uh, the highest I've seen it part and not moving uh, with AC on on two uh, was um, at 221. Okay, so I'm just gonna turn that off and just try to see on one now. But I'm surprised right now, it's, it's unchanged. Uh, it seems to me like it's, it's not, um, it's not running any uh, hotter than, than usual. It's like nothing is impacting it. And it being at a constant 212, that's that's pretty nice. So there's uh, no problems there, which is good. But um, I did not experience any problems today. And you can see um, there's my mileage. I did drive uh, probably about, about like 200 miles today uh, without no issues. But it's always at the back of my mind thinking that, look, I gotta get this done. At the same time, I have a... Uh, the pressure tester kit with me and uh, I have um, some distilled water with me and just in case an emergency situation I have um, radar stop leak with me as well so if I would run into any of these situations you know I got you know two gallons of distilled and of course uh, I could fix it on the fly and by me monitoring this gauge right here uh, this helps a lot because I could see exactly what's going on because the whole day, you know, today and even previous days, uh, this temperature gauge did not even shift. It just stays uh, slightly below center, which is fine. And this operating temperature is fine. So no issues. Um, but anyways, uh, in case you haven't watched the last video, I want to leave you guys with this. Uh, in the last video, I was working on it for about like a couple hours um, and in a video that may or may not show. Uh, but what has happened is uh, prior day, like a couple days ago, uh, the vehicle when when idling like this would heat up uh, as much as uh, 235 if you let it sit there, 235 on idle. Uh, now when, when driving it, it would reach uh, maybe like um, between 217 and uh, 220, like it would fluctuate like that, which was like quite normal. But anytime you're going through a drive-through when you're not driving or when you parked, it was actually going um, to like 
230 or 235. Now, this center one, with, uh, this gauge would still not move, but I already know anything above uh, 220 is uh, concerning. And what I end up doing is, um, I did actually pressurize my system. Uh, I did not put vacuum on it, but I just put pressure on it uh, to test it, to see how much PSI it will hold. And I basically let it hold on 15 PSI and it would sit there for about like 18 minutes and lose about two to three PSI in that time. And um, I was keeping track of everything. And on top of that, I added some more water and I think if there was any pockets um, of air uh, that basically has uh, gotten rid of uh, the air pockets. And what has happened when I pressurized the system, the very first thing that started happening, uh, the radio actually started leaking, the radiator. And it started leaking in its old spot. But because I have distilled water inside and from me uh, fixing the radiator leak um, about a week ago, I put radiator to stop leak in there. Uh, it has some like nanoparticles in it and whatnot uh, with some fibers that help uh, seal the leakage. Um, that was still in the system. And when I applied pressure at 15 PSI, um, apparently that, that was enough pressure for those holes to open up bigger to where it started actually leaking because prior to me applying pressure, nothing was leaking. Like it was just running like normally. Um, but when that pressure was applied at 15 PSI, uh, the leak opened up and it started leaking uh, on the side of the radiator, but it wasn't like bad. It would like hiss a little bit and sort of like get quieter, hiss a little bit, get quieter uh, until it, the hiss just basically quit hissing completely. And then it sealed up and the water uh, dried up because I was working on it for like a, such a long time that there was no more water leaks at all. And I let it run like that for a while. And then I shut the engine off. I applied more pressure and then the only place that was not holding pressure good was the over like radiator overflow tank that has a leak e e um, either along the seam where the bottle was actually sealed uh, or cracked somewhere else I cannot really tell where the crack is because it's like somewhere at the bottom uh, or like you know like the bottom kind of like a like a middle of the can so it started dripping just a little bit but even that has stopped so I think that stop leak kind of put an end to that. And then I did all this driving and occasionally I would pull over and I would monitor to see where the temperature was at. And for the longest time, it would only be anywhere from 217 degrees to 219. It was fluctuating um, between that, but, but at a constant kind of like, maybe when fans kick on, it would be like 217 without the fans kicking on uh, 219. But the biggest I've seen it was a lot later on in the day, which was 221. Uh, it was just like, like not like really, really concerning, uh, but it's at the back of my mind. I'm like, look, I gotta get this stuff done, you know? It's just a weekend right now, and on the weekend I could make a little bit more money, but I decided to just go ahead and uh, call it a day. Uh, that way, I could, you know, tomorrow's Sunday, um, I got to go to church and um, after I plan to replace my overflow tank and then I will be pressurizing the system and doing things the proper way, making a video about it and refilling everything um, and then doing a lot of tests uh, as well because I want to see if a radiator will develop any more leaks and uh, prior to even starting I'm going to pressurize the system, I want to see if the radiator even has any type of leak. Um, perhaps I will pump it to 16 PSI just to see if there's any leaks. Um, I mean, it would be nice if I could, um, not have to like replace the radiator at this time. I mean, I'm really not looking forward to it just because I got a lot on my plate, but this is the only vehicle that I have insured right now, even though I have 34 cars, this is the only vehicle that I'm using. So it's at utmost importance to me that this ve vehicle stays operational um until i get something else but anyways um thank you guys so much for watching um clearly 
uh, you've seen this temperature gauge and it's not moving, it's like not concerning, like everything's fine. And uh, it is a good thing, it is a good thing. I, I mean, apparently everything that I've done today, uh, even though it's a temporary fix, has solved the situation. And uh, this goes um, in line with my, uh, with my thoughts of fixing things up for pennies on a dollar and uh, trying to basically help find solutions on a budget. Uh, even though this is not the most rightest way to do it, but I did uh, I did everything the correct way uh, without using the correct fluid or actually replacing the parts that needed to be replaced. Uh, and as a matter of fact, I, I tested out the theory whether or not old radiator stop leak, if it's still in the system, will it actually seal up the hole in a leaking radiator? Uh, and it did. And I also think that it sealed up the overflow tank, but I'm not convinced because it's plastic and I just don't know how well it could actually seal that up because it's plastic. I think once I apply pressure to it again, it may just uh, open up those holes again in the overflow tank and it's gonna start leaking. But that is an easy one to replace and it's gonna get replaced tomorrow. I will drain all the fluid tomorrow completely. Um, I will try to um, refill it with distilled water and just like give it a, a rinse, I guess. And um, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll go from there. But anyways, guys, thank you all so much uh, for watching. Please stay tuned for other videos where I will be doing things like um, replacing the overflow tank and the thermostat. Uh, and I'm gonna be using a special uh, system that only costs 40 bucks, uh, but I'll pressurize it properly. Well, we'll put vacuum on it uh, with using a compressor, compressed air, um, and um, we're gonna fill everything up uh, like the professional way, you know. Something that's still cheap enough to do. Uh, the only thing I'll be doing wrong is not replacing the radiator. But at this point, like I said, I don't have a, a serpentine belt. I ordered it. It's going to be coming in. And uh, frankly, I really don't have the time to really do it tomorrow because I need the car uh, at 6 o'clock in the morning. I need it. So and tomorrow's Sunday and I need it Monday, 6 o'clock. So, um, so no, no chance on that one. But at least uh, overflow tank is going to be replaced thermostat and I'll have radiator fluid and uh, it's nice that I'm making all these videos it's even going to, going to be beneficial for myself that I could look back and I could see what the situation was what the temperature war was because I don't think you're gonna have somebody that's going to be monitoring this um, uh, temp radiator temperatures to this extent just because uh, it's not going to be uh, a video that's going to make any money. Uh, it, the only thing it does is just, you know, takes time. And not a lot of people are gonna go through that or maybe even have an external device that can uh, look at the temperatures uh, exactly. So uh, this is just a tuner that I have. Uh, it's able to do uh, a lot of different things. So I could, I could tune the engine or I could save money and uh, this thing, so it's pretty nice. I mean, I like it. And I could, I could basically uh, program it to work with any, any vehicle. Um, but anyways, guys, take care. See you later and talk to you in the next video. Bye-bye.